And yep, it says this Hangout is on air and live. We'll just uh, see when we see the first few people turn up, we'll get going. Um, and there we go. Hello, everybody. Hope you're well. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for your time and uh, for committing to uh, uh, spending the next few minutes with us, uh, roughly an hour. Won't be too long. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, drop in a little thought at the very beginning. I uh, injured my back. Uh, I'm on three different types of painkillers right now. And uh, so uh, the doctor uh, recommended that I go see a chiropractor um, basically, you know, uh, get some sports massage or uh, get my back checked. And uh, this is a back and body clinic I went to, and uh, this was the first time I've been there. And I'm not claiming on insurance, so I paid for it. And uh, guess what? They gave me this. It says, friend referral voucher, right? So for referring a friend, to a back uh, uh, massage clinic, there's a referral voucher here. Could it be a scam? Because everything referral is a scam, isn't it? But see, even a regular normal business like this that deals in physical fitness is happy for you to refer people. So if it's a legitimate business, you know, I get some five pound off the next visit, um, uh, and they get to, uh, the referral gets to meet uh, the clinic, and if they refer somebody, they get five off. So, you know, if you put it into context, a legitimate business can give you a little bit of an incentive to refer more people to their business. This is normal. This does not make my chiropractor a pyramid scheme. So a legitimate business does not, we do not have to put up with the world throwing pyramid scheme at us all the time, everybody does it. You get loyalty points and bonus points when going shopping to your favorite superstore. They even load your units onto a special points card. It is a perfectly normal, legitimate way of doing business. The reason people are negative is because they've chosen to be negative. So I just wanted to drop that idea with you. So without further ado, uh, I hope I can last an hour, but uh, I can't really cough or laugh or anything, so I have to be careful. But I'm going to share my screen, and we'll go straight away into the presentation, if that's OK with you. Bear with me. Bill, if you could please confirm if you can see this. Uh, so today's presentation is Mining Review, Companies and Business Models. Bill, I can't hear you, so are you, are you able to see it? Probably on mute. Yes, yeah, all good. All good, all right, thank you very much. All right, everybody, Mining and Business Models. I just wanted to show you this one little thing as well. Uh, choose wisely, right? On the one hand, you have this Rolls-Royce, which is arguably the most luxurious car maker uh, as a brand name in the world. Um, this particular model is a Phantom 6.7 liter. Uh, it costs close to half a million dollars, made in England, and the company's been around since 1906. So obviously somebody in China comes along and they decide to make a copy of it. Uh, not as impressive, clearly not as classy. I don't think it looks as nice. Uh, maybe you do. It costs less than a tenth of the luxurious vehicle. It's made in China. But there's something I'd like you to pay attention to. Rolls-Royce is no longer owned by Rolls-Royce or uh, anybody in Britain. It is owned by BMW. On the other hand, the Chinese company is so rich and powerful, they actually own Volvo and even the company that makes the London taxi. Why are we even discussing this? I just want you to bear this in mind for the moment, that yes, this is uh, an expression of luxury. You'll see a whole lot of network marketers posing next to cars like this. Um, and this is a knockoff cheap version. I don't think it's got half the safety features, 
there's probably no such quality in there if it costs only forty thousand dollars that's cheaper than the cheapest mercedes even so just bear that thought in mind that as a company this one here the chinese one is actually much stronger than rolls royce was rolls royce although it's superior in every other way actually became a victim and got taken over by the german bmw so let's just bear that in mind before we go any further and the first thing is i wanted to show you the bitcoin mining pool this is the total pool that mines bitcoin all over the world there's a whole lot of companies here there was a time when a few of these companies and these operators in the pool had a much larger slice of the pie uh, newer entrants have come in so clearly bitcoin mining is lucrative enough that new and uh, relatively younger startup companies are making their way into this pie chart uh, it looked very different two years ago and now it's a lot more mixed up but what i wanted to show you is the fact that just because there is a name mentioned here and how much share each of these mining pools have that doesn't mean this is everything because i know a company namely genesis mining and you probably know the company too that is the power supply to over half a dozen of these different slices here and they're also members with some of the other larger pies so just because the name doesn't appear here or does appear here doesn't actually mean anything. It simply means that the pool has been named after one or the other company, whatever they chose to name it. Whereas the power supply may not even actually belong to that company. And we'll get to that point a little later also. So this is the mining pool share. You can see ant pool is the biggest. Ant pool is uh, uh, literally uh, the, uh, linked to the biggest manufacturer of the ASIC cards that are used in the production of Bitcoin itself. But you see, you have to be a little careful. And the problem I have with some of these people in the pie chart here is the same problem that our CEO, Bill Rowell, had, which is basically, you know, it's great to see some very large established companies here. But if more than half of them are Chinese or Indian or something, and they have issues of transparency, of communication, you can't really enter into a partnership or into a deal with any of these and expect things to be done because your business is then fully dependent on them. And if you can't find a level of comfort with them, you have to be very, very careful who you're partnering up with, which is one of the reasons I wanted to show you this. You know, um, they look the same, but the Chinese version, you know, I don't think I would spend $40,000 on that uh, knockoff copy of it. That doesn't mean that they are somehow financially weak. They own Volvo after all. And if you remember, uh, Volvo was snapped up by them and they would have happily picked up Saab as well, which was the second largest Swedish car manufacturer during the crisis. But uh, some of the NATO countries objected to the sale of Saab because Saab is also uh, uh, has an uh, aeronautical uh, development wing. They, they produce jet fighters, including the Saab Gripen, and the Gripen uh, uses General Electric turbojets um, so it's all sort of uh, incestually tied in with each other and they weren't happy for Saab to be sold to a Chinese company because of some potential transfer of technology that was not uh, agreeable to NATO. So they let Saab die and a very prestigious Swedish car manufacturer, very old, uh, classy one, disappeared forever and the Swedish people lost their jobs forever. They're not going to produce Saab ever again. Uh, but it's important to note that these guys had the financial muscle to snap up all the other companies that were dying in debt. And on the other hand, uh, Volkswagen Group decided to sell Rolls-Royce back to BMW. They owned it for a brief period of time. They still own Bentley. Volkswagen owns Bentley. But, you know, this is, this is important to note that just because somebody is a big shareholder here, that doesn't mean they're necessarily reliable to deal with. 
Now, in terms of cloud mining, there are a few names. We'll be discussing some of these. But Genesis is clearly uh, one of the largest in the world from Germany, relatively transparent, easy to visit, meet, and there should be no communication uh, problems with them. Whereas some of those people in China, if the answer doesn't suit them or they don't like your question, they may not reply for a while. And you can't really do business on that basis if you're going to literally buy their entire mining power and then uh, package it uh, as part of your own business. Hashflare is another great company based in Estonia. And we'll be covering this company as well. BitClub Network doesn't actually tell you where they are based. They're not allowed to do business in the US, although they have a backdoor way of doing it, which again you know, raises a few question marks. But um, they don't tell you where they are based, although we know, and Genesis can confirm this to you in writing if you send them an email, that nearly everything that BitClub Network offers is basically Genesis contracts anyway. And there are a few top ones, Hashness, via BTC, EOPod. All these, Bitmain are the, the company that basically are linked to Antpool anyway. And all of these have issues, the, the transparency. They just don't give you the comfort necessary uh, by showing you uh, uh, either equipment or making their presence known. They're just interested in the money that Bitcoin mining makes. They take the money, and then you're left on your own. Okay, we'll be covering this company also a little bit, Hashing24. Uh, it's relatively new, but uh, they claim to be cloud mining since 2012. Funnily enough, CEX.io of China was the first cloud miner in 2013. They claim to be older than them even, which is complete nonsense. But a lot of things are claimed and said in the space of uh, Bitcoin mining. You really do have to be careful in which way you go. Now, here's Genesis versus BitClub Network, straight off the bat. Yakov Dolich is shown as the owner of Genesis website on who.is. You can do a directory search, put in there genesis-mining.com, and it'll show you Yakov Dolich as the owner. BitClub Network, for some reason, doesn't want to show who the owner is. It's just that I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and they tell me that Russ Medlin is the owner. This is one of his mugshots uh, that uh, appears on an unpleasant website, so I will not discuss that. But um, he is the owner, he's the founder, and he's made a few videos, he's made a little bit of media appearance. Um, but I don't know why, why would, a, why would a website conceal the owner? Uh, I really don't understand. Even if it shows as a company, why, why conceal it? Anyway, hash power comes. Genesis obviously produced their own. And as far as I know, 100% of BitClub Network is supplied by Genesis. If you know any better, if you know any different, if you can prove it other than someone told you who told you, someone else told you something that someone else told you, then you know, and, uh, if you have evidence, please show it. Now, with Genesis Mining, $30 is the minimum. You get 200 giga hash per second. With BitClub, you get to pay $500,000 and $2,000 packages, but they won't tell you how much mining power you've got. Why? Because 40% is paid in commissions. So if 40% is paid away, no matter which package you choose, whether the small one or the big one, you're not getting your money's worth of power. That's important to bear in mind. Because especially for people pushing BitClub Network in African countries, and I've seen a lot of so-called African leaders trying to get people to save up to participate here, if those people are genuinely interested in mining, guess what? Genesis does it at just $30, which is relatively affordable to most people around the world. And you don't have to pay a massive penalty. You know, commissions are OK, but you know, when you're getting relatively poorer nations involved, and you're putting this pressure on them to save up, it's just not fair, isn't it? And you know, your per terahash mining rate should be clearly visible. Now, because there's a lot of commission, binary-based commission involved in here, they will never reveal to you how much gigahash per second per day your maintenance fees is. And uh, Genesis are very clear about it at 0.00028 per gigahash per second per day. That's how much they charge. 
So if you wanted to buy one tera hash, it works at $150. When you buy 10, it's about uh, it's discounted a little bit. And if you buy 15 or more, it's discounted to 130 for every 15 you buy. Um, so per, per terahash. So, you know, it's very straightforward. This kind of transparency is important, I believe. And even though over here on this pie chart, you can see BitClub Network right here at 1.6% share of the world. This is just one of the power suppliers uh, to whom Genesis supply their power to. There's a few others here that Genesis are involved. It's just that they don't need, they don't feel the need to be named. Another way to check what is, uh, you know, uh, basically proof in the pudding kind of a thing. When you have a blockchain conference, now there is a blockchain conference coming up in London in October, and there are blockchain conferences all over the world. Why is it that Genesis is usually a chief sponsor of a blockchain conference. Their top management are keynote speakers. They open the conference or they close the conference with a speech and they're always on the top table. Why is it then that BitClub Network doesn't show their presence in that particular way? Simply because this is a business model designed to make money. These people are genuine cryptographers. They are there for sake of surviving or helping Bitcoin survive and thrive and prosper into the future. Returns are according to algorithm. You can independently verify how much you should get paid. If you know how much fees you've paid and how much power you have and the current rate of Bitcoin in the market, all these variables can tell you exactly how much you earn. Here, whatever you're earning, it's 40% less than you should have been earning because 40% got paid away. Your money literally paid somebody else who sponsored you rather than you paying for the power itself. Genesis have open-ended contracts, which means they will run out of power when they run out of power. It could be one year from now, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, I don't know. But when the contract runs out of power, it'll run out of power. Here it's fixed to a thousand days. Now they take the same contract and force you to buy every thousand days over and over again. And this is why the repurchase is forced. Here in Genesis Mining, your repurchase is a choice. If you want to buy more power, you go and add it on anytime you want, as much as you want. It's your choice. You are, you are not forced to repurchase the same old pack that has now somehow expired. So you see, straight away off the bat, you have issues that raise red flags in my mind you may be happy to bring people into a system where they're required to build a binary in order to unlock fat bonuses. But as far as Bitcoin mining is concerned, you can't get more transparent and generous than Genesis mining as it stands here. Genesis versus Hashflare. I'm actually very impressed with Hashflare. I'll be very honest with you. I like this guy, Sergei Potapenko. Um, this operation is based in Estonia. Um, your office is anywhere on, in Estonia. They may have uh, uh, mining farms elsewhere. And they're very, very transparent. Now, the CEO is Marco String for Genesis. Yakov is uh, the owner of the website, but the CEO is Marco String. Uh, in Hashflare, the CEO and founder is Sergey, and he, uh, the website shows it. So he's a proud owner of Hashflare, and he's happy to display his name. I like it. Thank you very much. That's transparency 101. Okay, at the very basic level. I hope you agree with me that if he owns the company, he is happy to let you know that it is him that owns the company and he's happy to show his face. Young chap, smart chap. I like this guy. Okay. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Hashflare whatsoever. Simple. In fact, Minimum with Genesis is $30. With Hashflare, you can start with just $1.20. But obviously, according to the algorithm, $1.20, if it returns you 100% in a year, you'll make back $1.20 in a year, which isn't going to change your life. So you really need a lot more. But at least they give you the ability to start low, start small, and that is a good thing. And I really appreciate Hashflare for that. I, I have nothing to knock them for. The difference is, uh, Genesis 
are a much larger company in size, in balance sheet. The sheer strength of Genesis is huge, which is why they are able to give a much more significant discount, 0.00028 gigahash per second per day. That's the fee that they charge compared to 00035 for Hashflare. Now, what's the difference to you? Well, although Hashflare's one tera hash contract works out cheaper, $120 instead of $150 with Genesis here, they work out cheaper to buy the contract, and both are open-ended. Both allow you to add on any time as much as you want, uh, so there's no forced conditions. And for this reason, both are more or less the same. But basically, the fee structure makes your daily payment 20% less with Hashflare. Just because it's a percentage thing, you see, it's per gigahash per day, per gigahash per second per day. So it doesn't matter if you had 10 gigahash or 1,000 or 10,000 gigahash. Uh, if your percentage fee is 20% more, look, this, you know, this is 28. Uh, if 28 is 80%, uh, uh, then 35 is 100% if you divide it accordingly. So this is 20% more, which straight away means that you get paid 20% less on a daily basis because they withhold 20% more fees. Now, it may not be much to begin with, but if your contract lasts more than a year, then surely you would have paid a lot more to them, even though you purchased the contract cheaper. And that's one of the reasons why you purchased the contract relatively cheaper with them. It's because they cannot bring their pricing uh, any lower than this. This is as low as it gets as far as Hashflare is concerned. They used to be even more expensive than this. Uh, until recently, they've had they were forced to lower their prices, but still they can't compete simply because they haven't got the balance sheet. It is unfair, I know. Uh, Genesis seems to be like this giant organization that can do things that others find impossible, but they have switched to geothermal energy in the Icelandic operation, and they've got some genius ideas for Sweden as well. Um, Hashflare simply not able to catch up. That's the only major difference between the two to be uh, realistic with you. So Hashflare is a good company for people who just want a little bit of money put into mining. This, this is uh, a company that I will have no hesitation recommending, except I'm not going to be promoting this company because I have my own to promote. There are a few peripheral companies where, you know, once you've made an investment into mining, you are not likely to get that money back. You have to wait it out, and you have to make sure that you recover your investment over a period of time. Now, again, Bitcoin or GB miners is actually a bunch of Indians. Uh, they've got a few Western names to add to their, uh, and a few Chinese names to add to their uh, system. But you know, they claim to own farms. Uh, there's no evidence whatsoever. Just going there to China and taking a picture standing next to a farm does not constitute ownership. Um, and there's a lot of things that are wrong with systems that pay out very, very heavy commissions, you know, 8% here and then another 10% there, and then if you meet this condition, you get X percent more. Where is that money coming from? You see, mining itself is such a razor edge thing where you know the fee, so everything else you make on top of that gets paid out to you on a daily basis. Where then do they find the money to pay 8% extra and 10% extra? So you really have to question these things. Same with Gladia coin, they've disappeared now, more or less. But you know, double your Bitcoin in 90 days, what, Santa Claus? You know, uh, they, they, they're gifting you uh, Bitcoin? No, they're taking from other people and paying someone else. And that's a Ponzi scheme, which you know, under normal conditions would be considered a fraud. And promoters of Gladia coin are nothing but frauds. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that, but you know, it may sound interesting to make a lot of money at other people's expense, but that's exactly what's wrong with the industry. And then you complain, you know, why don't people trust network marketing? That's because you know, if you encourage this kind of behavior, people have less reason to trust network marketing. Again, Coinspace, similar, you know, they were giving fixed return for a fixed period of time, and then your contract would be terminated. But how do they give fixed return? 
based on what? The algorithm varies. The algorithm is the same, but the uh, hash rate on a daily basis, the difficulty level varies. Uh, your price of Bitcoin varies. So why is there no transparency? So if, if they make a superb profit, they keep it and they just still pay you the fixed rate. And if they make a loss, where do they get the difference from? So you know you have to question the business model itself. Same with Coinomia. They pay 10% plus there's a whole referral matrix attached to it, a bit like the $100 monster, which is you know, nothing but a fraud. If you were to take these business models and present them uh, in, in a court, uh, the first question the judge is going to ask is, you know, how did you put this together without it being illegal? You know, so it's very simple. Minergate, another website that says we don't mine. We just basically, you know, collect tips from here and there. And that's how we collect our uh, Bitcoin returns. So, you know, when Bitcoin is trading at two and a half thousand dollars per coin, they want to give it to you for free. You're yeah, right. You know, again, hashing 24 mentioned it again. Uh, cloud mining since 2012 when CEX was actually the first a year later. You know, they make claims. Everything sounds very good. They have very nice websites, easy to use, user friendly. And that's the whole idea. People very easily get trapped without doing necessary due diligence, which is why it is important to take some time out and, uh, you know, on balance. You don't have to go necessarily to the scam busters all the time. But even those who are experienced, there is a reason and a rationale why they say what they say. And you know these type of companies have zero accountability. You will not get your refunds. And if they don't have transparency, you have to ask yourself a question. Why would you even put $50 in there, let alone $5,000? So you have to ask yourself, why would you want to put any money there when you can't even be confident about who and what these companies uh, really are like and this is what I wanted to cover in terms of balance sheet um, now my most of my Indian friends would agree that the Indian company Tata group uh, it's a large company they own Tetley tea in the United Kingdom they own British steel they own a number of other companies but you know I'm, I'm being very blunt I come from the city where Tata is made uh, in India it's called Pune uh, that's my hometown and Tata is incapable of making even 10% of a Jaguar or Land Rover's parts. Um, they have nothing going for them in terms of innovation, design awards, or some kind of superior engineering. They just simply haven't got it. Um, they grew because they were a monopoly in a closed economy that was India, closely associated with the Soviet Union for a very long time. It was a closed economy, therefore a monopoly. They're a major defense contractor, so they got guaranteed business. Every time the neighbors rattled sabers, these guys made a lot of money by supplying the Indian armed forces. Um, they have no foreign competition. Uh, even if you tried to enter you know, the, the, the trucking business, they make trucks, Tata mainly. Uh, that's the major uh, cash flow generator um, and they've never had to borrow any money because they were always cash rich they always had cash flow uh, and the Indian government discouraged borrowing but you see a time came when Ford Motors was nearly bankrupt needed bail-in or bailout really uh, Ford Motors needed bailout Chrysler needed bailout uh, General Motors needed bailout um, Mercedes Daimler Chrysler was a misadventure anyway, so they wasted a lot of time and effort and energy into a partnership that was cross-Atlantic partnership that was never going to work. So all these vehicle manufacturers in the West were suffering. These giants were suffering because of extra debt. And along comes this, you know, um, old kid on the block, but still a cash-rich person because they had the balance sheet. Now they can go and just snap up Jaguar and Land Rover and everybody feels very proud that Tata now owns two of the most prestigious brands uh, in the world. Um, all that may be well and good, but Tata really isn't competent enough to own them. But the only reason they have the competency is because of the balance sheet. And the reason I'm saying this is not to knock Tata, although there's nothing praiseworthy about them either. Uh, but the, th the thing about Tata is they simply had cash, so they could go shopping. So when someone came under pressure, 
it doesn't matter how prestigious the brand and how high quality the product is. If your balance sheet is under pressure for whatever reason, whoever is cash rich is able to buy you out. And this is exactly what I was trying to tell you Oops, in this earlier case with the Chinese company. You know, um, they are not Rolls Royce. Not in a million years. They're just cheap knockoff carbon copy of something that is truly high quality. But a time comes when high quality goes bankrupt. And then these people who've been prudently saving for a long time are able to jump in there and simply buy you out. And this is why it matters. This is why it matters when you're with a company like Genesis Mining. They have the balance sheet. They don't have the debt. And they have the net positive cash flow that no matter what happens with the Sedgwick uh, Bitcoin improvement plan, hard fork, soft fork, whatever happens next, these people have the balance sheet to steer their company and therefore everybody associated with them in the right direction. These people will be able to make some wise decisions, no doubt. But in order to stay ahead of the game, they simply haven't got the kind of capital that Genesis does, and it matters. It may not sound fair or right or whatever, but it matters that Genesis have a massive, deep balance sheet. They're not likely to be sold out so easily to some jump start that wants to become a world leader without having the tools to manufacture anything of quality. Now, this is something that happened only very recently, so I wasn't going to cover this, but I'm going to cover this now because of this comment in the middle. I don't know if you can read this. It says here, I am in SGG2, so yes, I know about it. Difference is SGG is auto mining, whatever that means, and USI is mainly auto trading, whatever that is. With SGG being around nine years, you don't get to see or meet the owners. With USI, you do. USI have been developing software for over eight years, FX trading as well as crypto, and expert software developers with over 150,000 members, blah, 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 blah. I very much doubt USA is going anywhere for many years to come. Liar. This is Bill Rowell presenting an award to Mary the Bitcoin granny. Here is Bill Rowell presenting the director certificate to Karen. Here is Bill Rowell talking to Stefan Schindler, the chief technology officer of Bit uh, Genesis Mining. Here is Bill Raul, the CEO of Swissco Global, talking to Marco Streng, the CEO of Genesis Mining at the Dubai blockchain conference. So complete nonsense that you, know, you don't get to meet the owners. No, you do get to meet the owners, and the owners are able to answer even the most difficult, toughest questions to your face looking you in the eye rather than hiding around behind a website that doesn't even give the owner's name away. You want more transparency? This is Yaakov Dolich, the owner of Genesis Mining website. And this is Marco String, the CEO. This is Bill Raul, the CEO of Swiss Gold Global. And the website is also registered to his name under Royal Golden Enterprises in Switzerland, which is the holding company behind Swiss Gold Global. This is Claudia Eifert. She is my personal sponsor. And we are here as transparent as it gets. You want more transparency? We'll deal with it in a moment. Now, I just want to cover this other company called Dragon slash Galaxy Mining. Apparently, they weren't doing as much business as they were expecting right off the bat. And someone suggested to them maybe Christians are staying away because it's called Dragon, so they had to rename it Galaxy. Uh, I don't know if they are doing any better now. But here's the story. They're transparent. The website owner, Ken Bruff, his uh, uh, picture and name is shown very openly, no problem. They're based in Washington State, USA. They're not allowed to trade in the US, but they have some backdoor uh, different link that does something or the other, and you can sign up with them. Now, minimum with Genesis is $30, as we saw before. With them, it's only $25, but that works out actually quite expensive. It's $150 with Genesis. That's $170 with them per terahash per second. But they will not tell you how much they deduct in fees, and that is explained in just a moment. First of all, if, if a company says we are very low on fees, 
well, prove it. Tell us how much it is so you can measure on a daily basis independently without having to phone anyone or email support or anybody else. You can check it out yourself. But you see, what, what happens is they conceal the returns because they force you to compound the first 35% income that you get. So if you were to earn $1 a day, they will actually hold back 35 cents, pay you out only 65, and out of that 35 cents, you will never really know whether they've actually withheld 35 or more or less, and you will not be able to work out how much the fee is that they've charged. Why am I even talking about this company? This is one company whose affiliates have been knocking Genesis every opportunity they get. A lot of them are South African. And they say that Genesis is a fraud, uh, the contracts got canceled. We've, and the reason they go negative against Genesis is so that they, they can open a conversation with you. Oh, really? What happened? Tell me more. No. What happened? Yeah, I'd like to know. And then they'll tell you, oh, no, no, I've got something much better. Look, this is Galaxy. It's much more transparent. It's this, it's that, and the other. So the method is to be negative about Genesis using a small army of especially South African affiliates because this company is linked into South Africa. Some of their top marketing directors, et cetera, are South Africans, and they have an existing team that does this. So it's a Holland-South uh, Africa connection uh, with actual mining farm. It's a real mining farm, so it's not a fake company. The mining operation is very, very real, but they are struggling to be profitable competing with Genesis Mining. So this is one of the methods they use. If you ever come across this, this is a video to show them to say, why forced compounding? Why don't you just pay out 100% everything that somebody's earned and then give them the option to go back in and compound as much as they want? Because in concealing some of it, you will never know how much really you have to conceal. How would you know that if they've concealed 45% instead of 35? How would you know? Because you don't know what they've held back, right? And you've only seen what they've paid out. And they've told you that that's the remaining balance of the 35%. So this is one of the issues. And then if you wanted to add more power, it'll take them eight days because they actually supposedly have the kit sitting around somewhere. And then when you buy a contract, somebody goes running and picks it up, unboxes it, connects it, and then it'll give you eight days before you start earning. Or well, chances are that it's already up and running and they keep the first eight days earning to themselves as an additional profit because ultimately it is a binary. Every time you hear that word binary, you know that there is a commission element and they're mainly interested in the commission-driven team building rather than offering genuine transparent mining to you. So again, you know, choices for people. Some people prefer this business model. I personally don't. I'd rather go with somebody that's very transparent and tells you, this is how much it costs. This is how much we deduct every day. Our minimum is here. And everything you need to do can be calculated according to an independent algorithm, not some kind of fudged up numbers that even the top marketing director is unable to answer. When I asked him, he did not have the answer, which is a shame. You, know? you don't get to be a marketing director if you can't even answer basic questions. USI Tech. Now, I don't know who the owner is according to the website, although I do have a couple of names that are at the very top. But the website doesn't give it away. And the only reason I'm covering this is because a simple, innocent person was given this great big spiel. And I think it's unfair. Because see, if you're in SGG, talk about SGG, that's great. If you're in USI, talk about USI, that's great. Keep the two separate. They didn't have to mingle it. But they mingled it, and then they lied about you know, not being, owners not being visible. No problem. This is one person. Not everybody is like this. I'm, I know so many USI promoters, and I actually appreciate their professionalism. So I'm not going to be knocking USI per se. But what happened here is a relatively vulnerable older lady was getting sucked into uh, USI. And they were pushing USI over Swissco Global. So I wanted to clarify this for sake of our members. So you are uh, empowered with some information. 
in order to be able to deal with people like this who are willing to sell you anything for commission, even if it is uh, something less stable. You know, commissions-driven uh, sales is, is easily done. But, you know, let's have a look. USA Tech, they claim mining and trading is where their returns are coming from. Genesis don't make any such claims. They just come from mining. That's the only business. They don't do any trading. They don't take any profit and loss related risks. 50 euros per pack. So your minimum is lower at Genesis to begin with. 50 euros per pack. And the pack, mysteriously, is a combination of mining and trading. Interesting, isn't it? Pricing, you will never know because you're paying for a pack. How much power the pack contains, you're not being told. It's just that you are to expect a certain rate of return per day. Fees, again, you will never know. If you don't know how much power you've got, what's the point in knowing how much fees they deduct and where the fees are even going towards? Because if you have a genuine mining operation, you're going to have to work out how much the fee is. By simply not telling you the fees, they don't even have to work it out. They just want your 50 euros per pack. Now, returns. Uh, currently, or in the recent days, uh, genuine Bitcoin mining has returned about 0.25% per day on average after fees, which is respectable. So uh, over five days, that's 1.25%. Uh, over a week, it's about 1.75%. Not bad for a week. Uh, here in USI Tech, you really don't know because the videos I've seen of people claiming we give 0.75 to 1.25% per day, we can manage it in between this range. Therefore, our average works out to be 1%. Yeah, But out of that 1%, let's say it is 1%. If it is 1% per day, you don't really know how much of it comes from mining and how much of it comes from trading, if indeed there is any mining at all. And this is on the back of a few claims, which I'll be covering in a moment. Um, Genesis, again, open-ended contracts. They could run out this year, next year, five years. I don't know. Here, they expire in 180 days. More realistically, between 140 to 160 days is when they are supposed to expire. And if you wanted to add on, you can add on any more mining power here. But here, you have to pay the same euro 50 per pack. That is, that is what the pack costs. So you just keep buying more and more packs with your earnings. You earn inside the system whatever you've earned. You go and buy more packs, and then you buy more packs, and you buy more packs. And all of your capital is tied into this. Sounds a bit like traffic monsoon to me. Uh, some people love that business model. Uh, I still don't know what it was all about. Now let's break it down. This is what the video said. We deliver returns from mining and trading. Okay, We have containers and containers of equipment. Show it. Prove it. Very simple. It doesn't take much to prove it. So prove it. We are trading like hell to make up for the rest of it. OK, let's see how the trading works. So we can deliver 0.97 or 1% per day. Somebody had worked it out while the person was talking that it's 0.97%, which is roughly 1% per day, which is quite respectable. Not bad. But if mining is genuine, then trading returns should be 0.75% per day, which is not bad. But this is where I personally would not want to lead, especially vulnerable, older people, people of limited means. I would not want to dangle this carrot in front of them of promising them higher returns and lead them into something that I myself am not confident about. I, it doesn't suit my conscience. It may suit yours. Congratulations, well done. Uh, but I would not be able to sleep having done that. 35% is paid in commissions, and it paid not just one level. It's paid a few levels. OK? 35% is paid out from $1. That means there's only 65 remaining. Now, if the 100 uh, or the 1 euro was to produce, let's say, 150% returns in 150 days, 1% per day, right? Is in 150 days, 150% return. That's around 365% per annum. But we know that the 1 euro is not 
fully deployed because 35 got paid out to you. So it's only left 65 working. And out of 65 euro cents working, it has to work a lot harder to produce the same return. It has to work more than 560% per annum. 560% per annum is huge to have to return. It works out to about 1.5% per day, more than the 1% that you're being shown. It has to be more than 1.5% per day because it's not actually the whole 100% that is deployed. See, 35 got paid out in commissions to several levels. So now they have much less money and they have to return much more on it. How do they do that? This here is the chart between January 2017 and July 2017 of just Ethereum. As an altcoin example, I thought I'll give you the example of the most heavily daily volume traded alternative coin to Bitcoin, the altcoin called Ethereum. Now, there's a whole month where it shot up, and there's been a whole month that it's come down. What kind of robot, show me what kind of robot produces consistent 1.5% daily returns in a bull market and the same kind of returns in a bear market? If such a robot exists, then I have a few questions. But we'll cover those few questions in a moment. The person uh, talking to the uh, older lady was saying that we have so and so many members. Well, yes, well done. Uh, so did Traffic Monsoon. They had two point something million members. And we have so many million in new funds. Well, congratulations. So did you know Charles Scoville. I think that's the roughly the amount of money he moved in and out of PayPal or something. But anyway, regardless, um, you know, $75 million or euros earned very quickly. Congratulations. 75 million euros in new funds, if each pack is 50 euros, is about 1.5 million packs. Yeah. Divide 75 million by 50, you get 1.5 million. Now, this 1.5 million packs need 1 to 1.5% 1 daily return. That means this 1.5 million packs have owners expecting to see 1 to 1.5% 1 daily. If you were to generate 1 to 1.5% 1 daily on 1.5 million, I'm conservatively talking, that's 1.5 million euros in daily trading profit. Daily, this is 1%, yeah? 1.5% would make it much more than this, would make it 2.25 million daily trading profit if it is from trading that the profit is generated. But let's go conservative. Just 1% on 1 1.5 1 million packs is 1.5 million euros every single day. Now, you're telling me this company is producing 1.5 million euros every single day, even over the last week? where the altcoin markets were down like 5% and then 10% and then 5% and then 10%. The robot was so clever. The software developers are such geniuses. You know, even large investment banks, and I worked in them, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, um, uh, you know, those days, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, even they don't have this kind of software. So this USI Tech has this kind of genius software that makes 1.5 million profit every single day and instead of pocketing this kind of genius technology and just quietly making money on yourself, um, this company wants to pay you 35% in commissions on top of that. How does that work exactly? Somebody please explain this to me. I would love to hear your story. I would love, you know, being a professional currency trader myself, I would love to hear, I would love to see how this thing actually works. Does it go, use the two-factor authentication on a mobile phone and then log into the trading exchange all by itself, the robot, or is it manually people doing it? If it is manually people logging into the trading platform, the trading platform trades seven days a week, you only trade five days. So somebody must be shutting it down. At least two days a week, it must be shut down, surely. You can't remain logged in. Or is it being traded and the two days profit simply not being shared? But let's say it's traded, it's trading seven days, or let's say trading five days. 
who logs in and out of the system without two-factor authentication? Must be a human being. Now, if there's a human being involved, surely they can see what the trades are. If the developers, the software is developed by some geniuses that are able to produce one and a half million dollars worth of revenue every single day, surely they can see which are the profit-making trades, which one was opened at what time, which currency was bought, which was sold, at what level, and then when was it closed out, what was the margin of that percentage margin of that profit. Surely all of this must be visible to at least the traders. Take a screenshot. Let's have a look. I'd love to see. I'd love to see where this trading comes from. If not, then this is nothing but another RevShare script. And if it is building up a daily liability, you see, <laughs> one and a half daily profit is roughly about 30,000 packs. Yeah? If they withdrew on a one day, the system would collapse. If 30,000 packs worth of people decided to take money out of the system, they would not have the revenue to pay the remaining packs, the 1%. So by promising 1% or thereabouts every day, the company is only accumulating a massive liability. And you know it's very easy to say we got attacked by some computer hackers attacked us and the system has gone down and we've lost all the funds, blah, blah, blah. And you know it's very easy to find your way to Brazil, which has no extradition treaty, live at large, uh, on Copacabana and Ipanema Beach without fearing any police ever arresting you and you run away with people's money. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario is if there is indeed mining and trading involved, well, let's have a look. I would like to see a single proof of trading. That's all I'm asking for, and it's a fair question. When I questioned about this company, whether they're trading or not, I got shown this. We are actually dealing with them. Our CEO has gone to meet them. When people talk about USI Tech being seven years old, nine years old, that is the FX side. The FX side is perfectly fine. It's legitimate. You can verify the trades on an independent platform called MT4. Don't mix the two up. The crypto trading side did not exist till about four or five months ago. And in four or five months, if they've accumulated this kind of liability so quickly, then I fear that they will also disappear equally quickly. But if they do, they would have made a lifetime's worth of earnings. And if they've made a lifetime's worth of earnings, what are you going to do? Anyway, people have been asking, why not go to Genesis? Why come to Swiss Gold Global? Well, you know, this is, this is where I'm hoping to cover this aspect. You lose nothing by coming to Swiss Gold Global, and yet you gain so much more. The transparency of the businesses, right there, you know who the people are. They're happy. Bill Rowell, anyway, is happy to meet you. Marco String is way too busy. Uh, but you know, if necessary, he's, he makes his public appearances. So it's not like he's hiding or anything, or not concealing his name from the website or anything. Bitcoin mining is where Genesis make their returns from. Cisco Global makes no excuse, 100% Genesis. There is no other company involved. Cisco Global have no equipment of their own. They use the contracts, and therefore, it's, everything is exactly the same as Genesis. The minimum, the pricing, the fees, the returns, and the duration of the contract is exactly the same as Genesis. However, in terms of repurchase, you can add on here, we do exactly the same as well, but we do something more. We take the Genesis rebate model and are able to spread it out a little more than even Genesis do. So there is one advantage here already. Um, that can be separately explained maybe another time uh, when we get into compensation. But what Genesis cannot offer you is precious metals. We've, give, we've got a cryptocurrency and precious metals exchange. We are primarily a gold, silver retail platform. You can bring in your Bitcoin and buy gold and silver, which is something Genesis are unable to offer you. We have that on top. And nothing has changed. You're not losing anything by coming to Cisco Global as compared to Genesis. In fact, Genesis are strategic partners. They are more than happy and they support us 
in retailing their mining contracts. It is their contracts. Now, we offer community, which Genesis is a big company. They've got members from all over the world, but they don't, the members don't operate as a group. Uh, uh, they don't operate as a team. We do it very differently. We have offline and online teams, and we offer all kinds of training and support. Uh, the most recent group we have on Telegram, for example, uh, you know, people are free to express if there are any difficulties, frustrations, they're free to express them there. In fact, most of us sympathize when things are tough, but when things are growing well, you know, we share information. Um, if you wanted to know which is the best uh, uh, Visa Bitcoin debit card for your location, guess what? We have a community that volunteers with the answers. Is it YRX? Is it Bitwalla? Is it Zappo? Is it some other? You know, we have people that have tried different things. They have experiences. They're able to share these things on a forum. We support each other in so much more. Even the discussion about Sedgwick and uh, segregated witness and uh, the, the potential hard fork and everything else that is coming up. All of this, we are able to openly discuss and we keep each other informed. We share articles with each other. We share latest information. And because we are also worldwide, you know, there may be some breaking news somebody picks up in New Zealand and before London even wakes up, it's been shared already with the group and we already know where to look for information. So we have, this is probably the most valuable aspect that we have over and above Genesis. With Genesis, you're just one of the retail customers like thousands of others or millions of others. Wealth education, we've got some very high profile trainers that cover not just precious metals and cryptocurrency, but wealth generally and the mindset for wealth. This includes Bob Proctor, Sandy Gallagher, etc. This is not something that Genesis has as part of their business model. Asset portfolio, <laughs> you get a Swiss precious metal storage account and you get everything, cryptocurrency as well as precious metals, under one login in an offshore tax-free jurisdiction. Is it fantastic or what? And this is over and above everything that you already get with Genesis. The only thing we don't do is we don't offer the 3% discount code while buying a Genesis contract. You can get that from a Genesis uh, retailer or Genesis promoter. But with us instead, the same 3%, that's what we take and redistribute and create a uh, more than unilevel pay plan out of that 3%. That's how we rearrange it a little bit. Well, that's the only difference. Now, if people promoting Genesis knew all these strengths that we have, on top of the fact that we have an optional multi-level marketing program, or you can just become a plain distributor. You can become a distributor of Genesis contracts or a distributor of precious metals without yourself necessarily wanting to build a multi-level team. You just bring people in for sake of retail sales and you will get paid if you're just retailing goods and services and not even bothering with the multi-level marketing program. But you have all these options with us, which is not strictly the options you have with Genesis uh, uh, mining at all. So I hope this covers a number of things that uh, have been a little overdue to share. I'm just going to revert back to our trusty friend, uh, Bill Wilmot, and see if uh, Oops, where is it? If you have any questions or uh, any anything come up in the chat, maybe. Yeah, yeah that was one point, and I think it's um, what I was aware of as well. This will make my life a bit closer. Um, about the mining, I've heard different um, interpretations of what they are supposed to be doing in the mining. And it feels like it's swapped around a bit. I think at the moment they're not doing the mining, but perhaps they were doing it at some point in the past. Who, who are you talking about, sorry? I'm talking about uh, USI Tech. Oh, okay. I think that's probably was something they did say they were doing to begin with, but perhaps it's been sort of moved away. <laughs> so, but I, I, fundamentally, the returns are still credited, as you said, and the question, you know, begs, you know, how is that, you know, sustainable? Yeah, in the, the day. And what about transparency? And I know that some friends of mine went along to meetings in London and I know someone on the call here this evening 
and the few sort of asked the question, well, can we see the proof of the trading? And uh, they couldn't prove it. So obviously there's that doubt. That's always going to be there. My um, little bit of concern is that if the FX trading, and the FX trading was good, it still is good. It, it's a good, legitimate, proper trading company. Mm. Yeah? So if that was going so well, why did they venture into something that doesn't have proof? Oh, I'm going to tell you, I think I know the answer to that, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate a little bit here. I think their target audience is, at the moment, it consists of people looking to make money quickly, yeah? And I think without trying to put things down, is that they, you know how the MT4 platform works, they need a VPS. I think the difficulty was getting for the technological piece, and it's easier to go and buy a pack on the website than it is to connect to MT4 and your MVPS and get your account going. And I think that's my understanding of how it evolved. Okay, fair enough. So let's let's assume that there is uh, that the trading is legitimate. Uh, my question is this: that for a whole month, if on average the market has been going up five to ten percent, why is the daily return only one percent? I don't know. Ask that question. And then for a whole month, if the market has been going down on average five to ten percent, how can you still produce one percent returns? It, the numbers do not stack up to anybody that knows a little bit more about trading, about how banks operate on the inside, which I do know. So for me to be satisfied, so I'm not going to promote the system. And to all those that are promoting it, I congratulate them. Please, you've chosen your risk. You've, you've uh, clearly made up your minds about how you want to do it. I could have easily promoted it uh, if I took time out of my core business to promote it you see it's very simple I keep uh, one person kept challenging me saying well what's 50 euros you're not willing to take 50 euros worth of risk well, I can take 5,000 euros worth of risk but you need to be able to answer my legitimate questions answer my questions and I will take that risk it's one thing for me to put money into something where the returns are coming and feeding me but it's another thing if I was to spend time and effort, which are limited, scarce commodities, not everybody has time and effort at their disposal. If you take these two commodities and you're devoting them into promoting something that may not be here six months down the line, then you're going to look back at it as so many people have been doing with so many other businesses that have already failed. You're going to look back at it and say, I wish I had stuck to something solid and built that instead. Now, congratulations to all those people that are doing well out of this, out of the 35% commissions. And I hope they've been drawing down enough to put some aside because if you're going to keep rolling up and putting your money back into the system, then everything you've got is with that one system. And when it goes, it will take everything with it. It's not going to sit back and then start redistributing, saying, okay, I owe you 200 I owe you 300 I owe you. no when it's gone it's gone overnight and this is why I do believe people ought to be smart enough to draw down everything they can out of the system but be careful who you're promoting it to vulnerable people with you know somebody says I've only got a thousand dollars in savings and I'd like to see some good returns on it you know this person is not able to find another job they're already a pensioner and you're putting their money into a vulnerable system um, for sake of higher returns, you know, you're acting like a, a, a financial advisor, and you shouldn't be doing that. You see, uh, I, don't, I shouldn't be doing that. I, I keep repeating to our own team, look, I, I'm no longer authorized or regulated, so we don't get into the territory of financial advice. All we say is the following. You must have a small potential a percentage of your total liquid wealth in precious metals and over and above that you choose how much risk you're willing to take in order to expose yourself to mining which currently is returning 30 40 times minimum more than your bank is paying you actually it's producing a lot more but we always use conservative figures for this one reason so when when you're saying that you're not giving advice 
But if somebody says, all I have is $1,000, and you put them into a system that has neither proof of trading nor proof of mining, and for a person to say, uh, oh, we're trading like hell, we're trading like hell, well, I would like to see that trade. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, you know, it's one thing to stand over a table full of people having their dinner and tell them, your money is coming from trades. You're supposed to believe that. Fine. Somewhere, prove it. And this is the same problem with Trade Coin Club, Crypt Wealth, Trade, whatever the other ones are. Nobody has that kind of software. Nobody. Um, I spoke to a top promoter lady of Trade Coin Club. She's very, very close to the owner. And I asked her a simple question. Uh, how do you trade? She says, we make millions of microtransactions per second. I said, okay, millions of microtransactions per second. Which exchange? We are on all of them. Okay, which is your biggest exchange? Oh, we are on Bittrex. Okay, so on Bittrex, you're making millions of microtransactions per second, and your bot knows how to do that. Yes. So, what if the daily traded volume of the stock that you're holding goes down to zero? There was a, a few cases, I've been tracking the markets on a daily basis. Um, there are a few cases where one day it's the highest traded volume of an altcoin, and a few days later it becomes one of the smallest daily traded volumes. How do you get out of that trade? Or have you already closed it within the same cycle? So you see, there's a, there's a lot of uh, aspects to this um, that don't stack up, and you need evidence, you need better comfort and I, I would personally want to join if I can see proof just because somebody says here I've said it this is proof that's not proof enough so I hope this was a useful review guys uh, going forward we'll cover some more I think we have enough chance to do one more Wednesday hangout next week to cover the fork Sedgwit uh, or Segwit or whatever you want to call it and how to prepare for it this has been uh, a consistent demand coming in from uh, some of the members. So I'd love to cover that um, and try and keep it simple uh, as I usually do. I hope you found this uh, uh, presentation of some value. Um, what did you think, Bill? What, was it useful the way? Uh, yeah, because I, I haven't done those direct comparisons the way you have. I mean, I've looked at them and the key thing for me was the transparency or lack of it. And um, obviously, there's so many startups coming through that are linked to Bitcoin, yeah? And I had one the other day without, called Spade Trading Limited or something. And the guy was posting his timeline. So I Googled it, found the website, looked it up. It was a registered at Cutting's House in March. But allegedly, they've been trading for four years, yeah? And of course, there's no profit loss statement, anything yet. So you can't actually assess it as a business. It's a startup that can go belly up tomorrow, and it's probably a scam anyway. But my point is that the startups you've got to look at as you know, you've got to assume they're scams before you actually assume they're businesses because they can't prove anything as a startup. So you've got to have at least a who is look, uh, who is showing you who the owners are. You've got to have a registered address that actually has a phone on the end of it, and you've got to have some something, some evidence somewhere that tells it's got a possibility of being real and tangible and most of them don't have that so um i think it's been highly educational today certainly there are some very positive comments coming out a lot of thank yous and we're just happy you can get through the presentation without having a relapse really because we will be very worried about you as you can yeah. Yeah? yeah thank you thanks for all your good wishes people. <laughs> uh, thank you very much uh, i'm i'm uh, a lot better now i'm able to sit uh, which is a big deal I've got a couple of physio uh, uh, appointments coming up as well. I'm on three different painkillers, but it, it will get better. It's just, you know, uh, I wish I was doing something brave when this happened, you know. Um, I was just brushing my teeth in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it snapped. You know, I coughed once and it, it just something snapped and it, it just went downhill from there. But guys, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. I hope this is a good value. Share it with those people who come up with these comparative arguments. Share this and uh, I would love to see some rebuttal. I'm happy to be corrected, by the way. You know, I'm happy to eat humble pie if I'm wrong. 
Mm. Um, all, all it takes is prove me wrong. I invite it. It's it's not a personal insult. It's just an academic study. If you have a better academic study, then I have the humility to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'll make a public statement about it. But until such time, there is no evidence. Nobody can claim that this is such and this is such and co-mingle two things. Nobody can claim that this is a nine-year-old crypto trading company. No, they started crypto trading four months ago. So let's not go there. So, you know, when people talk things up for sake of commissions, 35% to be precise, you have to know that that's what they're after, not your financial well-being. Um, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, those who built a good business and kept their head on it and kept at it despite the difficulty. We've had some issues. We've had some payment processor issues. Uh, banks hate, absolutely hate precious metals and cryptocurrency both at the same time. So, you know, we're going to face some headwinds all the time anyway. But regardless of that, we are moving along. And, you know, in the long run, it is all looking good um, because transparency. And we're working with the world's biggest balance sheet, remember. You know, mm -hmm. this, is, this is Genesis Mining we're talking about. They're not going to abandon us overnight. And for that reason, we're with them rather than the others who will not reply to your email if they don't like your drone. And you don't want to be working with that kind of a professional attitude either. Mm. So, but anyway, guys, thank you very much for being here. And uh, do give us a thumbs up if you like the, uh, the, the presentation. And please feel free to share. There's no links in this video. It's for you to share when you come up in a discussion with other people. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.